Hey guys, remember when I said this about Friday the 13th, the final chapter? Yeah, this is the best one yet, guys. I was lying. I was lying straight to your face. Why the fuck you lying? Because it turns out the best Friday the 13th is actually part six, Jason Lives. But it isn't by much, and I really think these two films actually go together really nicely. Cheryl Teagues, nice. At the end of the final chapter, we see Tommy finally kill Jason once and for all. And he was actually dead in that moment. I mean, he was buried and everything. And it was pretty interesting to see where they were going to take the franchise after that film. And then of course we get a new beginning, which shouldn't have even been called a new beginning. Would you shut the fuck up? And eventually part six. I think you could get rid of a new beginning if we're looking at these last three films. I mean, it does have some things that add to Tommy's character and explains what he's been up to throughout the years. You could really just add those in in part six and still have the same movie. As we know, in A New Beginning, Tommy is at that halfway house. He's getting treatment from what happened to him as a kid. And that carries on into part six, where Tommy is still, you know, thinking about the past and what had happened between him and Jason. The reason I say part six is better than part four is because I just think it's a really interesting point in this franchise. I like where the story is at. I think they have Tommy kind of figured out at this point. I know part five maybe was a rough patch for him. I think the overall characters and cast in this one is slightly better than part four. And they're not that much better. The teens that we're kind of following around don't have a lot of work, but they're at least a little bit better in terms of like chemistry. The kills in this thing are amazing and that goes with Jason as well. I think this Jason is arguably the best one yet. Jason is really incredible. I mean, he's, he's a zombie at this point and he is just taking lives. He does not give a fuck. No, there's a scary man! <laughs> what scary man? Round one, fight! Also, this is the first Friday the 13th where we actually see camp counselors interacting with campers. I mean, you think of these movies as being, you know, films about camp counselors getting killed off, and they are, but you also probably would assume there's summer camp going on, but not until part six, at least there hasn't been really. I mean, in those films, they're kind of setting up for it or getting ready, and in an hour and a half, the pace of this film is great. It doesn't really stop at any point. It's really just like a roller coaster from the very beginning. But overall, I think four and six are easily the best ones I have seen yet and I don't think six is that much better. I think you need four to obviously build six, so you can't take any credit away from the final chapter. But anyways, it's slasher summer, and I am going through the whole entire Friday the 13th franchise, watching them all for pretty much the very beginning. We're on part six now, Jason lives. Let's do this thing! Daddy, chill. So this thing comes out in 1986, and Danny Steinman, who directed the last film, said, I'm out of here. And Tom McLaughlin stepped in. And I like where he takes this film. He plays into all the tropes and everything that you want to see in a Friday the 13th movie, and it's still really cheesy and funny, but it also takes itself pretty seriously, especially when Tommy's on screen. This whole point of this film is just to stop Jason once and for all again. Jason's not in his grave houses! Dig it up! You gotta dig it up! For an hour and a half, like I said, he does a fantastic job. So the film kicks off with Tommy and his buddy racing down the road to head to Jason's old cemetery to finish this job off. Because I guess Tommy needs some more clarification that this piece of shit is really dead. And oh, it looks like there's gonna be a storm. Might need Glenn Powell's ass to come save you. I'm feeling pretty good, man. Anyways, Tommy is played by another actor again. This dude is a goddamn shapeshifter. His name is Tom Matthews. I think it's the best version of Tommy we have seen yet. I mean, obviously, Corey Feldman as a kid was good as Tommy. And then we had John Shepard's version of Tommy. He was super moody and, you know, I didn't want to associate with anyone, but he could totally kick ass. Now this version of Tommy, Tom Matthews version I'm talking about, isn't kick ass like uh, John Shepard's, but he still is very, very keen to stopping Jason. And that's all that matters really to Tommy's character. So they're digging Jason's body up, even though Tommy's friend is like, dude, let's get the fuck out of here. It's about to rain, there's a storm coming in. You shouldn't be digging up a serial killer's body. Oh shit. Tommy does it nonetheless and sticks a pole into Jason's chest, yeah. Fuck you, Jason. Well, Tommy fucks everything up because some lightning strikes the pole at the perfect time and resurrects Jason's ass to make him officially zombie Jason. Tommy's friend gets totally fucked up and Tommy bails the hell out of there. Run, bitch! Run! What the hell? Oh my God, 
and we get a really cool James Bond-like intro. Probably the best intro yet. All right, so that's, that's the sage for the movie. Jason's alive again. Tommy is running around like, oh, what the fuck did I just do? And the rest of the town is going to be getting a rude awakening when Jason's ass rolls in. So Tommy immediately goes to the police station to tell Sheriff Garris about what's going on. I mean, Sheriff Garris needs to know, right? Sheriff Garris is like the worst cop ever. Don't piss me off, Junior. I will repaint this office with your brains. Uh, doesn't believe your stories, thinks you're just a crazy psycho piece of shit. Tommy doesn't seem too crazy. I know he keeps talking about Jason and Jason's supposed to be dead for some time now, but like he did go through a lot as a kid and those events actually did happen in this universe. So you'd think he would have a little more sympathy for him. So Sheriff Garris shoves his ass into a cell and tells him to shut up. You get some sleep. I'm gonna come in there and put you out. So then we cut to two counselors heading to Camp Forest Green. Yeah, they've tried to do a little bit of a PR work with Camp Crystal Lake, obviously, because of the murders. Even the town has switched names, I believe. I think it's just called Forest Green now. Counselors Darren and Elizabeth are driving down the road in the middle of the woods, you know, scary as fuck. Perfect time for some killing to go on in a horror movie. Stumble across Jason. <laughs> Darren tries to be some sort of hero or something, and he's got that iron on him. I mean, jeez, he keeps that thing hot. And if I get him first... Fuck you, fuck your mother, and fuck your man. How about that? The following morning, we're back at the police station where we meet the group of teens we're going to be following in this film. So first, we have Megan Garris, the daughter of the sheriff, Sissy Baker, Court Andrews, and Paula. They're all telling the sheriff that Darren and Elizabeth haven't reported in, and they're probably missing. Uh, the sheriff's like, yeah, you know, anything could have happened, right? And Tommy from the back's like, it's Jason. I've got a bad feeling what might have happened to them. Well, hopefully they're fine, but with Jason out there... Shut up. This gets the traction of Megan, who goes over and tries to talk to him, but that's cut short. Jason who? Megan, stay away from him. He's an absolute fucking unit on the basketball court. We cut back to the gravedigger, finally figuring out that Jason's body has been dug up. And yeah, bro's just having a drink while on the job, doesn't give two fucks. At high school graduate. I deserve this job. Megan, Sissy, Court, and Paula all make it to the camp and they get ready for the kids to arrive, in which they do. We then cut to a group of paintballers in the same woods somewhere. So none of these characters are important. And you know, that's the thing a Friday the 13th movie is going to do. They're just gonna throw in random characters so that they can just die off. And I'm fine with that. I understand that not every character is going to be, you know, a focal point to the story or driving the narrative in any real way. You don't care about them. And yeah, you're just seeing the kills, which the kills are really good, like I said in the beginning. Jason walking through, just slashing these fuckers up. Really cool to see. Sheriff Garris is escorting Tommy out of town, you know, saying, leave and never come back, you piece of fucking shit. And Tommy pulls a fast one on him. Well, this leads him back to the cemetery where Jason was at, where Tommy just gets pinned to the ground again. It's a little chase sequence that we get. Tommy loses. Fucking Sheriff Garris is deputy just pulls out that laser scope holy shit he's got that thing upgraded looks like he wants to pull that trigger on tommy wherever the red dot goes you bang but he doesn't and just escorts tommy away at camp the counselors are doing their job entertaining the kids giving them lifelong lessons right things that they can build on forever and then sheriff garris finally does kick tommy out of town saying be leaving wearing your balls as earrings tommy's like ah oh, it's like that maybe pull out some of those cool kung fu moves on old sheriff garris's ass and show him a lesson so it's nighttime grave digger he is out just drinking again we also see a couple hanging out in the woods in the middle of the night well the old grave digger goes first with Jason totally fucking his night up and then the couple gets it next when Jason takes his machete and puts it through both of them before they can escape. Sissy and Paula are playing a game called Camp Blood. I mean, it's really on the nose, guys. And it's a little fucked up if you think about it. I mean, in this universe, Jason was a real life being. He did these atrocious acts and they're just playing a game, you know, called Camp Blood where you reference Jason in it. You pull cards that represent camp counselors. Meanwhile, Court's getting freaky with some chick named Nicola. They're hanging out in her stepdad's RV, just doing the deed and Jason takes the power out from them. This tweaks them out a little bit and they want to go. They eventually get the RV going, but Jason was hiding in the bathroom and totally fucks up Nicola. Court's too busy rocking out in the front to give a damn. This costs him his life as well. <laughs> then we get arguably my favorite point in this film when the RV spins out, crashes. Really cool what they did there. And then you have Jason coming out from it and standing on the top when it's on fire. Cinematically, just an awesome shot. 
Back at the police station, Megan is telling her dad that he should really start doing something when he gets a call from one of his deputies. They say they found some bodies in the woods. He still doesn't believe Jason's back or anything like that. Just saying that Tommy is a psycho piece of shit and you should not trust that motherfucker. Tommy Jarvis is a very sick boy. So Tommy calls from a payphone to the police station saying that he's got a plan. I mean, I don't, what, like, he was expecting to get Sheriff Garris, but he got Megan luckily, which she helps him because she just loves the guy. He's like, I gotta get some stuff for this. Uh, it's gonna be dangerous, but let's finish this fucker off. Let's do it. Jason shows up to his old stomping grounds and the police find more bodies in the woods. And it's looking real grisly at this point. I mean, there is clearly a deranged serial killer on the loose. When Sissy and Paula are sleeping, Sissy decides to get some fresh air from the window and Jason just yoinks her ass out. But Paula just didn't realize this happened, I guess. <laughs> Megan comes to pick Tommy up and he's like, hey, you can't come. This is way too dangerous. She's like, hey, fuck you, dude. Who's gonna drive this car? Not you, clearly. It's me. So Megan and Tommy are trying to get back to Camp Forest Green where Tommy can enact his plan. But the cops have, you know, stationed all around this place because of what's going on and they catch on to these two. There's a whole chase sequence. It's just an 80s action movie at this point. They go around for some time, eventually leading to their stop where Tommy and Megan get caught. Megan, step out of the car. End of the line. They take Tommy's ass back to the police station where they lock him up for another time. I mean, jeez, Tommy's gonna have some priors after this. At camp again, Paula's tucking in a little girl who just saw Jason, you know, seeing she saw a monster again. Paula, I can't sleep. I'm scared. I saw someone at my window. Tucks her in, and yeah, Paula gets it. <laughs> Things are getting a little dry at the police station, so Megan and Tommy devise their own little plan to get out of this jam. She slips Tommy something where, you know, it's telling them to react to whatever she's doing. It gets the deputy's attention to eventually leave Tommy making out. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Grabbing the keys off the deputy because he's a total doofus, locking his ass in his own cage, and them escaping. Megan, don't clown around. I'm not the one with the funny red nose. So once again, Megan and Tommy are heading back to camp. The cops are stationed all around and Jason is on the loose, just taking lives by the minute. This leads to a couple of cops being killed and Sheriff Garris getting into a confrontation with Jason. Holds his own for the first few moments, actually, you know, ragdolling Jason's ass on the ground a few times. But Jason's the unit that we know he is and he gets up. He will never stop. This makes Sheriff Garris run away. When Tommy and Megan show up, they see a lot of the dead bodies. They see a lot of the carnage that's been going down and they're like, holy shit, we gotta get these campers, you know, to safety. Tommy's like, I gotta finish this motherfucker off. As Jason's, you know, looking for more bodies to put on his list, he's walking through the woods. Here's Megan's scream, which Jason turns around to go kill her ass, but Sheriff Garris is hiding in the bushes and fights Jason. They have a good little duel for a moment again, but Jason just brutally takes his life. <laughs> Tommy uh, begins his plan by driving a boat out into the middle of the pond, setting the little ring of fire around it, and you know, waits for Jason to come. He shows up from the water and him and Tommy start going at it. It's a duel. Tommy's eventually able to get a chain around Jason's neck, which is tied to a boulder. This is supposed to drown Jason and it does, but Jason also brings Tommy down with him. Well, Megan jumps in at the very last moment to save Tommy's life and she kills Jason with the propeller of the boat. Really cool kill, looked like it hurt a lot. They swim to safety, the campers are safe as well. Jason's actually still alive. Of course, they cut to that at the very end. Jason's kind of twitching his finger and then his eye opens up. Cool, fine, whatever. At least it hasn't ended like the f other five movies have where, you, you know, Tommy would be in the hospital with Megan and, you know, Tommy starts feeling that urge to turn into Jason again. Now, fuck all that shit. Jason's alive. Okay, cool. I didn't expect him to be really dead. Like I said in the beginning, it's the best one I've seen yet, I think. I just think in terms of story, kills, characters, the Jason, and all the other tropes that we kind of want to see from a Friday the 13th movie does better than the other films have done. I also think the directing and the writing are a little better than the other ones too. You know, not anything too crazy because these films have to follow a certain pattern. I mean, people expect to see those in Friday the 13th films. And overall, I think it's six and a half out of 10. So next up, we have Friday the 13th part seven, The New Blood. If you guys like this video, I'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel and liking it. Thanks guys. Thank you!